back with the gentleman's corner and as promised I'm here with another review today's review is something that I've been pretty excited about um, it took me a while to actually get my hands on this uh, particular fragrance but it is none other than 1725 Casanova by history's perfumes that's my decant um, I got about a 30 ml of it so I'm gonna just jump straight into it the notes are bergamot, citruses, grapefruit, licorice, uh, lavender, star anise, vanilla, almond, sandalwood, cedar, and amber. Now, right off the bat, with this uh, with this particular fragrance, because I know it's been compared to Invasion Barbar a lot, but to my nose, I really don't get that. Maybe just a little bit, but it's an immediate blast of like a sharp spiciness with an airy soft sweetness at the same time um, it has a small and I mean very small similarity to um, Invasion Barbar like with the spiciness but Invasion Barbar still has the um, it tends to still go in the direction of a barbershop smell and a barbershop feel whereas uh, Casanova just kind of has that sharp spiciness smell just in the beginning and then it travels into parts of seductiveness not like uh, Dior Homme Intense, but more like a tuxedo or more in a charming manner, like its name, uh, Casanova. Um, I think everybody's nose is different, like when everybody smells it and everybody's skin and, um, you know, skin texture is different. Um, but to my nose and what, what happened on my skin, and I, if I had to pick three prominent notes I got in the opening... Uh, bergamot, citruses, well, citruses slash grapefruits, which that's to me is still kind of considered a citrus, um, and the amber, because the uh, like I say is the sharp yet still airy kind of sweetness, and that's where the amber comes in. But obviously with the uh, citruses and the grapefruit um, and the bergamot, that's where the spice comes in. Um, the mid, the mid comes with the lavender. It uh, starts to tone down the citruses just a little bit um, with the with the lavender and a hint of vanilla and maybe a drop of the star anise. And if you don't know what star anise is, it's uh, it's like a bitter smell. That's really what it has uh, has to it. And I say j it has just a drop because that bitterness is you know it's it's, it's strong enough to where it can scale it back you know just enough. But it doesn't scale it back to where it's completely obsolete. Um, the dry down, however, um, the citruses have been scaled back completely, like almost pushed into the corner. Um, now you kind of have this amber, vanilla, almond, uh, lavender cocktail, and it is almost reminiscent of the dry down that's in Dior's Cologne Blanche. Um, however, that one is more in your face, that, that dry down. And this one is more mild and docile. And I'll talk about that later. Um, here's the thing about the uh, about the mid. The mid is kind of like Jekyll and Hyde. Um, it's smooth and cool as long as, you know, your body's not perspiring and you're, you're in an air-conditioned environment or you just, your body's not hot. It'll kind of like play the part. But the moment you tend to sweat or your body heats up, that spiciness, that sharp spiciness, kind of comes back out, um, and it, it's like a, it's like kind of like a sweet and spicy kind of like bite combination that you got going on. Um, as far as the uh, the longevity, today, and I have to say this like this, today this one lasted on my skin about six to eight hours, and it's still I'm still getting wafts of it here and there. And the reason why I say today is because um, I ended up perspiring quite a bit today. Um, cause I ate some spicy food or whatever and I was doing a lot of walking, but I have gotten longer out of this when I was in more and more of an air conditioned environment and I wasn't perspiring nearly as much. Um, also, um, as far as the opening goes, the opening, the opening and the mid kind of like run together almost. It's kind of like, if you're not careful, you really won't know just exactly when the fragrance began to change and it has gone into the mid until you I guess you can say it, 
it kind of uh, is not as in your face. So if I had to take a guess, because like I said, I, I really wasn't paying attention until I was like, oh, it's not in my face anymore. I would say the opening lasts maybe two hours or maybe one and a half to two hours. Um, and then after that, it goes right into the mid and then around about the the three and a half to four hour mark, probably more than likely the four hour mark, that's when you get the dry down. Um, this fragrance to me is for gentlemen who are college level seniors. Maybe a junior could pull this off, but it's more toward college level seniors on up. So maybe 22, 23 on up, because I know when you're a freshman in college, you're still kind of trying to find your identity and still trying to figure out who you are. You're going to all the parties and all the frat parties and, and whatnot. But this this fragrance is not really for those guys. This is a much more smoother fragrance. This is a much more a well-done fragrance. Kind of like um, this fragrance is, to me, much more suited for the fall and the winter. You could get away with it in the other two seasons however in my opinion you need to be heavily air conditioned in order to really enjoy the full potential of this fragrance i mean from beginning or opening to the all the way to the dry down um i won't to be perfectly honest i don't care how much air conditioning that you really get unless you just walk around with the igloo i really don't think that this will be a great great summer fragrance and i'm saying i'm basing that summer based off of the uh, summers that we have in Texas, which they are really, really hot and humid at the same time. And the summers we have here in Japan, which is just pretty much humid and humidity like everywhere. So it's like you're perspiring and it burns completely off your skin. But I really could see this in a nice, cool um, fall and a nice, cool fall weather, as well as the winter. I really think that this will cut straight through the sharp wind considering it has that little bit of air, that little bit of spiciness and that bite to it. Um, the spring, I would flip a coin on that one. Maybe on a good, cool spring day, sure, absolutely. And especially if you're in a very well air-conditioned environment, of course, absolutely. But on one of those hot, hot spring days, I don't think that this one would really suit you as far as being able to enjoy it from opening all the way to dry down. Now, of course, you can wear fragrances whenever you want, but I mean, as far as being able to fully enjoy this fragrance to the maximum potential, I just really think that the fall and the winter and a little bit of the spring will be best suited for this particular fragrance. Well, I give this fragrance an 8.9 out of 10 because I really wish the dry down would project uh, just as much as the initial opening and the mid. Um, because this is where the fragrance to me shines the most. Um, but unfortunately, it's also when this fragrance becomes closest to the skin. And you can kind of take that how you want to. Um, some people that might be really good because when you if you're in close quarter combat or whatever, you know, obviously when, when your counterpart is up on you, they'll, sm they'll say that you smell really good. Um, however, I really like that part of the fragrance. So I really, really would really want it much more in my face I guess so to speak now the thing about the opening and well mainly the opening um, I did about six sprays which is really usually what I average at a minimum with six sprays on almost anything that I spray um, you will have a really I don't even want to say a bubble it's more like a square or a cube like almost a force field around you and this thing projects really well um, for the first, I don't even want to say two hours. I know for at least three hours I was beaming easily, you know, and I, I, I know I, I hit at least six sprays, probably more, but I know for sure I did six sprays at a minimum. But like I said, it's not even like a little bit of, it's not like a little bubble that people can smell you. This was like a for real force field in a square. So it, it's, it's, it's a nice projection. Is it a projection beast? I really won't say it's a projection beast, but that's kind of a good thing. It's not too offensive, like in your face, but at the same time, it's it's just enough. Um, the ciliage on it is great. I mean, I caught quite a few double takes today, so I knew that you know as as soon as I passed by people, they could smell me and everything like that. Um, again, like I said, I wish the dry down just lasted just a little bit longer. 
but can't really complain. It's uh almost borderline on the in the masterpiece category. I'm still debating. You know, some days I'll say it's a masterpiece. Some days I'll say no, nah, it's not quite there yet. So that's why I gave it an 8.9 out of um, out of 10. The price is about I think it's 120 dollars. So that's not bad. Um, and I got mine in a split, so that's even better. But uh, if you, I don't even really want to say if you like Invasion Bar Bar, you, you know, and you want a, a alternative, get this because to me it just really doesn't smell like Invasion Bar Bar. I still have Invasion Bar Bar on my on my um wrist here, and it still smells like a barbershop. And this is something completely different, in my opinion. But that's all I really have based on this review. I hope I was thorough enough for you, gents. This to me is uh, one of my top fragrances that I will be taking on my journey journey back home with me. So, without further ado, I just want to give a shout out to Phi Beta Sigma, Blue Phi, you know, who you are, Navy, peace. Talk to you later, gents. Oh, and if I didn't um, say this already, I believe Lucky Scent has this for a sample. So just in case you want to sample it, which I would advise. Peace.